Okay, hi guys and welcome to this a uh, little bit under 15 minute time lapse of the Starachosaurus concept that was originally drawn by Havia. And we've taken this model and we're now 3D concepting it in ZBrush and Maya, rendering it out in Redshift and then doing a grade on it as well. So this video sort of follows some of the other tutorials on the site. Those being from Croc and the free tutorial, which is the Simple Dragon ZBrush for Maya users. On the site, we've got a full hour covering the Starachosaurus concept 3D model. But here we'll just do a compressed version of that in and running at a bit over 10 minutes. So enjoy! Alright, so let's get started here. This is uh, the start blocking of the model going through this step by step and we're here in Maya and that may surprise some people who uh, are really big on ZBrush. This is a ZBrush sculpt uh, ultimately. But starting in Maya, we can block out the shapes and forms quite easily. And this requires that you do have a fair bit of experience in Maya polygon modeling. And that's what I encourage all of my students to, to have a very strong foundation in polygons. That way the ZBrush uh, sculpting tools are, are a lot easier and we can do stuff like that over there. But um, this is a really great way of blocking, especially these sort of cartoony characters. You get really lovely smooth shapes in polygons. You can whack this together really quickly, actually in Maya's polygon modeling tool, surprisingly. And then we can easily just come across the ZBrush and join it all up, as you'll see in a second. So I'm really big on primitive blocking. That's not box modeling. It's a, a different sort of way of thinking about modeling. And that is that you, you block in lots of simple shapes that intersect and sort of join together. And you can see how I'm doing it here, just um, bringing these simple shapes together, blocking them out and creating them quite quickly. This is also an ideal character for starting in Maya. Not, I don't always start in Maya. Sometimes ZBrush is much easier a lot of this stuff, but here the blocking is done quite quickly and that's because we've got a lot of shapes and having objects uh, in Maya rather than the subtools in ZBrush is much easier to handle, at least for me it is for sure. And I encourage uh, a lot of my students to really practice this blocking stage without even doing a lot of sculpting. It really teaches you basic underlying forms and simplicity and all of these things that we really need to get our models looking good. So here we've, we're using some of the zoo tools uh, which comes with the site subscription and we're just starting to render out uh, this guy in Maya already with some presets. So you can see how quickly that sort of comes together. It's just a matter of clicking a few buttons and now we can just toggle through all the light setups. Switching the brute force on the, the GI on in Redshift there. And now we're just applying some simple shaders to that background. Uh, I went for a purple, but it sort of comes out a bit pink on this monitor. And you can see that, that we've just got a quick block there. So if your block's looking fairly decent in Maya, it's going to be really, really easy in ZBrush to sort of join that together and add all the details. So this is just the sending process. Just cleaning up the, the model a little bit there with OBJ clean, just making sure that's good. A few scripts that come with our, um, the C3DC prefs from the community, from the Maya community. And then coming into ZBrush, joining it all up with Dynamesh and Zedrimesha, and then just starting to sculpt. So ZBrush, as anyone who follows 3D quite closely knows, is a, a wonderful sculpting package. It's definitely the premier sculpting package, no question there. And it's got these great tools for really being able to join your models together and add all the details, all those fine details that uh, would take so long in topology and used to take us such a long time. So uh, just here coming in and using a really simple set of tools, everyone sort of agrees on the main sort of tools with slight variations. Mine are the clay build up, move, the damn standard, H polish I really like as well and pinch. They're sort of my main tools. I've got a few others that I use from time to time, but they are the main tools that, that I use in my workflows. And, and I tend to work very simply. So a lot of people get quite overwhelmed by ZBrush, especially if you are coming from Maya, for example, thinking that it's quite a complex package. So that's why we've got a simple dragon free sculpting for Maya users on our page. If you are sort of coming across from a Maya point of view, you do want to learn a little bit of ZBrush. Uh, you can check out those free pages on the site too. So this is using a lot of those same tools that I'm using on the free tutorials, the, uh, the Simple Dragon tutorials. And now just applying it to some slightly more complex shapes, as you can see here. So just going through here and sending it back quickly to Maya. This is just because I prefer to place these horns back in Maya. I make the mesh live, just snap them around. Of course, you can use insert mesh brushes and things like that in ZBrush too. It's just my workflow. But what I like to show here is that you can go from ZBrush and then come back into Maya quite quickly, make some changes and then send the, the models backwards and forwards. So you don't have to necessarily be in this very linear process of, oh, we start in Maya and we go to ZBrush or we start in ZBrush and then we send it back for lighting. 
doesn't sort of work like that. Anyway, a little bit of UV unwrapping here in uh, ZBrush there. Uh, nasty unwrapping that's just sort of a one button and it just unwraps it how it wants to. But that will be good enough for this sort of concepting thing. We don't need perfect UVs. We don't need perfect sort of stuff happening. And uh, you can unwrap that model really quickly. Get back uh, and start polypainting. And now that we've got the, uh, the UVs on this model, we can actually save out the mask. So you can see I was using the masking there already to cut in some of the lines into the face and whatnot. And those masks can later be reused when we do the polypaint. Um, so uh, ZBrush, I find that the, its layers are pretty ordinary for doing uh, painting. So I tend to steer it clear of doing any layer painting in ZBrush. If you want to use layers, might as well go to the other programs, Mari, Mudbox, I guess 3D Coat would have it, or uh, Substance Painter. So there's a lot of ways to do, but if you just sort of like paint in one pass, I find in ZBrush, you can get these quite nice results quite quickly to a really good sort of result that's good enough often for showing, putting it in front of a client or sort of like getting a feel for how the texturing will work. Most sculpts do look better with some basic colors on them, I've found. So especially when people are nailing these more cartoony styles now, certainly perfect for this model here. So we're getting pretty close to, um, or we've finished the textures there or the poly painting, converting those textures across to show you how to do that on the site in quite a lot of detail, getting those back and saved out ready for Maya so that we can start the lighting there. And then saving out the displacement maps, uh, the C3D left-hand sidebar that you see there is free. You can get that off our site too from the, any of the sculpting free pages. Uh, you can download those UI and hotkeys. Really helpful for getting displacement map out. I always use the vector displacement map for things like this. So now setting it all up in Maya. So here I'm using um, the Zoo Shader Manager tools. Now this is a great uh, way of learning. And in fact, I built these tools and then just started using them myself because it takes all the clutter away from the attribute editor when you're using the shaders and it sort of just keeps it all simple. Really good way of managing your shaders. Our tools work for the three renderers, Redshift, Arnold, and RenderMan. So you can use the same tools for three renderers, um, which is really nice. Um, now just scaling it up for my light presets. So we've also got these, the Zoo Asset Manager, we can bring in backgrounds and lights with the click of a button. Then you can cycle through these. So I just duplicate my camera out because that gets deleted each time that I'm cycling through these guys. And then I can just press down and by pressing down, we are cycling through the, the background and lights sort of presets. And we can go through those quite quickly and come up with different looks sort of instantly. So these are like light presets that are pre-done. And I'm just about to get into the training of this. So I'll polish all the tools up for you guys a little bit. You can see already how well this is working just really quickly. Now Redshift is fantastic for this because it's just got such quick update speeds. Duplicating lights out. And now I've sort of decided on this lighting preset and I'm now coming in and just tweaking those lights, adding a directional light because I wanted a little bit of a, a stronger shadow underneath the eye there. And the uh, light editor, which comes with Maya, we can use these to isolate the lights and sort of check out what each one's doing and get a lot of control out of our lighting. So I'm sort of blending together a few area lights, a directional light and an IBL there. And just to get the look that I'm kind of after and checking just to see what those lights look like by themselves and adjusting the intensities of each of those. And we've got a lot of nice tools in the zoo tools too for mass sort of in interacting with lights and adjusting intensities of lights it's a really nice way of working too so i can show you that guys through that uh, in the next class that i'm doing now so here's some redshift lots lots are just sort of like little grades lookup tables uh, that get uh, into that so it can just give the the really sort of redshift and arnold and renderman they all render out with a very neutral sort of a grade so if you want to do a grade, it's it's a good idea just to throw some lots on to see what that looks like. But I will be sort of sending out and rendering out this model in Adobe Premiere. So this little section here is the vector displacement map. There's one button for vector displacement map that has set up all the nodes and everything, and it will do it for all three renderers. And you can see the differences there. It's quite subtle because this is quite a dense mesh, but vector displacement works very well for low res meshes as well. So here I'm just sort of doing a few little things to speed up the displacement in Redshift's render view so you can update that model really quickly. A couple of little tricks that I go through in the long version of this tutorial. And now these are the mats. So just making mats uh, with our buttons as well. So of course you can do all this natively in each renderer, but it's just a bit easier with the tools. You just click and, and select the color that you want for each shader. You can also click on the objects themselves and that will also uh, set all that up for you as well. So just going through that there, assigning all the mats. These are sort of called AOVs in rendering. And what the mats will do is it'll enable us to isolate each shader 
in comp so that we can adjust the colors of that in Premiere. Now, I didn't really use it that much in this model. I think the, the render came out pretty well, but it's very handy in a lot of situations for doing that. So now I'm just breaking up the renders into a foreground and a background pass. So that's the background, saving that out and uh, getting that rendering and deadline now. So both of these, I've got to render two jobs here. Uh, Deadline's a great little render manager that uh, is free for one copy. So you can get one copy if you need more than that, you need to, to buy it. And you can go through and render two different passes, a foreground pass with just the head and a background with just the psych and the shadow. That's that rendering away there. And I'm just checking it as it renders. All this happens very quickly because of Redshift. What is that? 14 seconds of frame in Redshift. Not too bad for full HD. And there we're just cutting to it being finished. So now I'm just making some folders, putting in all the images into those four folders. I'm in a bit of a habit of working in After Effects for that. We are sort of hacking it a little bit here. So ordinarily you definitely want to be rendering out as EXR uh, images, but this one, it's a fast workflow. So I'm just going straight to Premiere and skipping all the After Effects or Nuke stuff and going straight into a couple of PNG sequences. Uh, we can comp and grade them. There's the sort of the creative looks from Luminetric Color. Just uh, nice presets there that you can use in Adobe Premiere. It comes with Adobe Premiere. Adjust those, giving that background a little bit of a blue, adding vignettes if we want them. I think I made that quite subtle and just exposing it up a bit to get a bit of a better look on that. So it's got curves in the Luminetric Color and we can really play with each sort of element. You can see the before and after of the grade there. So it's all looking a little bit nicer, playing with the color tints on the foreground by itself, and then nesting all this into a sort of a master sequence. What I usually do is I add a little bit of noise and that just sort of helps out the compression on Vimeo and YouTube when we're going to export to those sources, and then just saving that out as an MP4. So hitting the export button, that will render. And now you can see the final turntable there. So there you go, guys, that's uh, rendering rendering a turntable very quickly from ZBrush. Uh, all this process takes about a day of work. You can do the whole thing in a day once you've got a lot of speed up and you could make a lot of models potentially and uh, impress your clients and whatnot. So there you go, guys. Of course, this is available on this long page on the site. So this is available for subscribers, just $10 a month. You can cancel at any time. Comes with all the files. You can download the model, check out all the different stuff. Lots of notes um, breaking down how to do different things. So I hope you enjoyed, guys check it out on the site and we hope to release some more free content soon.